गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स एम आई ऑडिबल होपिंग आई एम ऑडिबल एंड विजिबल लेट मी स्टार्ट I thought I should not disturb you. Your festive mood, mood of festivity. But few things inspired me to come to talk to you. The last few days, the last yesterday, in some of the mouthpieces that is. journals of some of the communist parties communist sects and even congress spokesperson they have made processions in support of hamas and some articles as headlines in their newspapers they are supporting hamas and criticizing israel friends ask them few questions have they ever made any procession in this country in last 75 years in protest against the killings tortures by muslims on non muslims hindus christian buddhists in east pakistan and west pakistan have they ever have they ever even when 25 years back in kashmir the hindu families were being tortured killed raped in kashmir in this india in this part have they ever protested have they ever spoken out a single word against such inhuman tortures inhuman activities genocides and these very persons are so active making processions protests and big headlines in their mouth pieces when there is a tussle between israel and hamas and are they not, is not hamas a internationally declared terrorist organization and ask them who first attacked the civilians of israel on 7th instant is not the hamas is not the hamas the attacker on which moral ground they are supporting hamas is attack by hamas on israel is good in their eyes they are supporting the terrorism of hamas is not it a fact that israel was created under un resolution is not it a fact that this geographical area is the original homeland of the jews they lost it more than 2000 years back and moved throughout the world in different countries as homeless refugees receiving humiliation tortures in different lands which are the hypocrisies which are the hypocrisies and the different sects of the indie communists 
you will see you will see you will see is there any response is am i audible am i audible i do not know whether i am audible but let it be on record <coughs> ask this different sets of indie communists indian communists have they any policy for this country have they any policy have they any concept declared concept or the boundary of this bharat the communist in communism there is no concept of nationalism they do not approve theoretically in their ideology no national boundary they are on the concept of <coughs> the global a, a boundary less land mass a one one nation from the world without any boundary they do not have a concept of a nation the national boundary then what is their stand when china attacks vietnam on a border territorial issue what is their stand what is their stand when there is a tussle between russia and china in their boundary and there was a declared war in 1964 on border issues what is their stand and ask these questions to expose their hypocrisy and these communists you will see think of the communist party of india jyoti bosu 1946 they demanded pakistan they supported muslim league for pakistan they campaigned for that even after that when at the nest on the british gandhi nehru muslim league they designed the partition of india they supported that but the moment when samprasad mukherji demanded for partition of bengal here for the homeland of the non muslims and akalish they are on west division of punjab for the homeland of sikhs and hindus that time jyoti bosu supported for west bengal the communist members supported the partition of bengal and the communists majority of the communists in 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 bengal and in india are my their forefathers are migrated from east and west pakistan what prevented their forefathers to stay there is not communism needed in east pakistan and west pakistan what prevented them to stay there and what compelled them to come to this land and come to this land of west bengal they claim created by shah prasad mukherjee now why you are settled here why you came here and subsequently you are criticizing shah prasad mukherjee for partition of bengal that's your hypocrisy you are so notoriously pathologically hypocrite you are so liars you are so pathological and you are today and you are speaking not a single word using not a single word in last 75 years against the tortures of hindus christians buddhist in its peace pakistan and its pakistan not a single word in your party mouth pieces not a single procession and you and your different sects of the hindi sects i think i i, I call them sects of communists in india are getting processions in support of hamas even you have no word against torture of hindus in kashmir by the muslim terrorists there you have used not a single word not a single word and you are so vocal about the 
Hamas. You are so, have so love for the Hamas, the terrorist group. Basically, you are terrorists. Basically, you are terrorists. And in this India, all these Siku, seculars, Marcus, all sects of Marxists, communists, and Kongus has got common characters. Common characters, common character is they are all anti-Hindu. They are all anti sanatan They want to destroy history, heritage of Bharat. They did not believe that one time Bharat was a civilized country, civilized land. You do not believe. Common characteristic. They do not believe the historicity of Maharama and Mahabharat. They do not believe in greatness of Gita, Upanishad, Ved, Vedanta. They do not believe in it. To them, these are just literature, the stories. I will quote today the Western scholars in which I, in which level they, they see to our history and heritage. What they have told about history heritage, our scientific achievements of our, of our past days. I will quote that thing. But these Siku Maku Kongus are pathologically anti national. Hello? I will tell you what I want to say. They are so pathological and practically they are following the directions of the enemies of Bharat Bosho and their common aim to destroy our history and heritage and to destroy the history and heritage of our scientific achievements in the past. Do not believe that. None of them believe that there was a Ram temple in history, historically. And in High Court and Supreme Court, it is proved by the archaeological survey of India that there was temple. And you see, they are so notorious, so pathological, that they are beloved historians, Romila Thapar, all these things, the com comrades went to the court, placed an affidavit that they are, we are telling that this land belongs to the Muslims. And even they claim they stand on science, rational thinking, but they see the behavior. They are disbelieving the excavated materials, excavated by National Archives. Geological, uh, archaeological survey of India. They do not believe in the Supreme Court verdict. They are still today, even after the Supreme Court final verdict in favor of the Ram Temple, they are still now openly criticizing the Supreme Court verdict. These are pathologically anti Bharat, they are pathologically anti Shnatha. In their DNA, anti Bharat attitude is within. In their DNA, they are following the footsteps of the enemies of Bharat Bhushan. Let me, let me quote a few things. What was our history? Is, what is our history? What is our heritage? And I say your character, their characteristics. They are this character. Think the Sikumaku Kongus of these last 75 years, <coughs> about 65 years they have ruled this country. And different states are ruled by them. What is their historians have done in writing the history? What the history writings? In literature, what? In all states, 
in the school, college, university syllabus, what is the place of Netaji Shubhas Chandra and revolutionary history? They all tell the same old story, Gandhi brought independence and without bloodshed. This, they, are, they are all liars. And you see, even their favorite writers write in the books, in the school level, college level, that radio apps discovered by Marco. They have not mentioned the name of Jagadish Chandra Bose. And they claim they stand up science, stand on science. They speak the truth. They are so liars, so pathologically hypocrites, so loyal to the foreign agents, still they are following the directions of the foreign masters. They will never preach achievements of our national scientists of today and of the past. They will never accept that. They will never accept the historicity of Rama and Mahabharata. They will never accept. They will always tell this is all story. Now I will go and why? Why why they are to now my hands and the volumes? Few volumes. Beautiful tree by Dharampal and Indian Science and Technology in the 18th century. All these art articles here are based on British archival documents. British archival documents, when the first British came, the East India Company came, in different parts of this country, they surveyed what was our education system, what was our industrial system, agriculture, medical treatment, surgical treatments, they surveyed. They surveyed and created papers, white papers. All those white papers were sent to the England. And the body of the scholars in their conferences was reading that, consulting and following it. And they copied that. all these articles and all these articles here, what was your metallurgy? How in the Middle Ages, even before that, our forefathers were extracting iron from the iron ores, it's technology. British followed that. And the finest steel was produced in the world first in this world. This is their papers, British papers. Magnesium, zinc, or extractions. Bharat was the pioneer. Mortar, concrete, in Bharat was the pioneer. Medical science, surgery, Bharat was the pioneer. It is their narratives, their white papers, preserved even today in England in different archives. Dharampal followed those papers and read created and made these volumes. Only once I, 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 I quoted one, one article, I am I, giving you the extract. The Indian, in, 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 in India, the authors write, the smallpox vaccination was invented by Edward Jenner in 1776. This is taught. But what was the history? The first white paper, first message of vaccination system in this Bharat was conveyed to England by a British, wife of a British ambassador in Turkey. How in India the smallpox vaccination is being practiced. That was 1720. Then, in 1731, Oliver Colt, 
on survey prepared a record that was sent to england and this paper was read in 1766 in the forum of the college of physicians of uk and from here from here edward jenner got the idea of smallpox vaccination and discovered it there in england in 1796 and then british this colonial policy how to introduce it in india and from the world then they passed a law in 1802 to 1803 passed a law in india banning the old practice of vaccination the oriental practice which is indigenous practice of vaccination in india they banned it they banned illegal made declared it illegal in fear of that law being punished being imprisoned in bharat the local physicians stopped that practice of oriental indigenous technique of vaccination then the british technique of vaccination was introduced and this is the way how british learned from us then destroyed our techniques they introduced their techniques here in bharat claiming that this is their discovery and you will be astonished to see that all these sikumaku scholars are following that footsteps of the british imperialists now i am going to quote something a volume of treasure trove of ancient indian scientists written by ms c dharan this volume records the different techniques of sciences in practice now in our in our history in middle ages and before that is a record of that this volume is published by government of india the publication division of ministry of information and broadcasting here our metallurgy surgery medical sciences ayurveda steel factories vaccinations all these are on record even the aviation science planes aeroplanes model survey this publication of the government of india that publication is of the year say 800 page volume is 900 900 942 volume publication by government of india in the year i think 75 oh, 2007 2005 refilled in 2007 but contents of the volume will never be tolerated by this sikumaku community because if they accept that this will be proved this will be declared that once bharat was at the top in all in all metallurgy astrophysics physics chemistry medicine surgery attack psychology law grammar all these things all these things and in one of the volumes that is the beautiful tree there is records how many lakhs of school in different planes primary middle and high was in bengal presidency how many lakhs of schools of different planes their own records and they tell and what the sikuma ko kongu are telling that we had no education system british came here to teach us they have civilized us they have taught us and if they accept it they have they will be in a compelled position they will be in a position compelled to accept that at one time our bharat was superior in education 
disciplines, education system, political systems was superior to any country of the Europe. They are not in the position. They cannot accept this fact. Now, I will quote some of the statements of the great persons of Europe. Remember, though the British, as their colonial policy, on the surface has repeatedly voiced that we have come here to teach you, to educate you. But some of the scholars are there who has recorded the truth. All are not scoundrels. All are not that cunning. There are some persons of simplicity, wisdom and knowledge. They have confessed it. They have recorded it. How great our Bharat was in different subjects. Now, I will quote some of the statements. How much time? Oh, only 27 minutes. I will not disturb you. I will not disturb your festivity mood. Okay. I am quoting. I am quoting one. Vincent Smith. Yes, Vincent, historian Vincent Smith. I am quoting it from Bharatiya Bigan Manjusha, Treasure Trove of Ancient Indian Sciences by M. S. Sidharan, published by Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, Government of India. By Vincent Smith, the foreigners universally yielded to the wonderful assimilation power of Hinduism and rapidly became Hinduized. The foreigners, they came from different corners of the world, universally yielded to the wonderful assimilation of Hinduism and rapidly became Hinduized. What does it mean? What does it mean? Hindus are so much communal. Was communal or is communal? What is this statement? Statement by Vincent Smith. Then, I am quoting a Greek philosopher of Middle Ages, Apollonius Tyrannicus. In India, I found a race of mortals living upon the earth but not adhering to it, inhabiting cities but not being faced to them, possessing everything but possessed by nothing, possessed by nothing. Another quote from Will Durant, I think Will Durant still today of the modern world, the greatest historian ever, the greatest historian, Will Durant. And this Will Durant has been mentioned, his greatness by Mahaka in one place, Will Durant, the greatest historian of modern world. India was the motherland of our race and Sanskrit, the mother of all European languages. India was the mother of philosophy, of our philosophy, of much of our mathematics, of the ideas embodied in Christianity. He has confessed the root of Bible is in in Bharat and root of mathematics is in Bharat and root of all philosophy and their languages in Europe is Bharat of self-government and democracy. He has, he has told it repeatedly. Bharat, India is the motherland of democracy. In many ways, 
Mother India is the mother of all of us. And in the last in speech in, in, in that G20, in one of the speeches of uh, the Prime Minister, told in this line, maybe he was, he was inspired by these lines of you do that. Then, I am quoting another from Lord Karjun. You know, yes, Lord Karjun is a bad person. He was the person to divide Bengal, partition of Bengal, 19, 1905. But remember, please don't forget, he is a very wise man, very wise man, man of wisdom. And he knew for the interest of his British Empire, partition of Bengal was needed. Because you knew Bengal and you knew Bharat. You are so wise, just I am quoting two lines from his writings. India has left a deep mark upon the history, philosophy and religion of mankind more than any other terrestrial unity in this universe. India, again repeating, India has left a deep mark upon the history, history, history of humanity, philosophy, a religion of the mankind, more than any other terrestrial unity in this universe. And that I am quoting Roma Rola, Roma Rola. If there is one place of this earth where all dreams of living men have found a home from the very earliest days of men's existence on earth, it is India. It is India. Romarola. I am quoting another Albert Einstein. Let me quote. Got. We owe a lot to the Indians who taught us how to count, how to count, without which no worthwhile scientific discovery would have been done. Repeating, we owe a lot to the Indians who taught us how to count, without which no worthwhile scientific discovery would have been done. Albert Einstein. Now, I am quoting Max Muller, whom you call Mokko Muller. Max Muller has this design. He's a, he's a German Sanskrit scholar, native scholar, who was borrowed by the East India Company. He was placed in one university in England with the task of translating pain into English and with the instruction don't give the proper level to the translation under translation so that the superiority of the bed cannot be shown to the world an undervalued translation he did, he did his giving duty he did it but what was his motive? Motive. He has told it. What is his motive? He was a paid person by the British. Max Muller. Max Muller. In the study of history, of human mind, confession, though in his biography he has clearly written that I am on payment. I have been tasked, given duty to translate, but under translation, so that the superiority and supremacy of the Ved is not established. And also some translation so that the Englishman and the Europe can understand Ved, can reap knowledge from Ved also. But to hide the superiority of Supremacy of the 
content of Veda. But still then, the man is confession. Max Muller wrote, quote, in the study of history of human mind, in the study of ourselves, our true selves, India occupies a place second to none, second to none and second to no other country in the world. Whatever sphere of human mind you may select for your special study, whether it be language or religion or mythology or philosophy, whether it be laws or customs or primitive arts or primitive science, everywhere you have to go to India, whether you like it or not, because some of the most valuable and instructive materials in the history of man are treasured up in India and India only, India only. Yes. Can I quote further? Yes. I am quoting another. <coughs> another. A Syrian priest astronomer. A Syrian priest astronomer of 7th century AD. Sabot. I am quoting. I shall now speak of the knowledge of the Hindus of their subtle discoveries in science of astronomy, astronomical discoveries, even more ingenious than those of the Greeks and Babylonians, of their method of calculation, which no word can praise strongly enough. I mean the system using nine symbols. If these things were known to the people who think that they alone have mastered the sciences because they speak Greek, they would perhaps be convinced, though a little late in the day, that other folk, not only Greeks, but men of a different tongue, knew something as well as they. One Swedish scholar, John Starna, said, quote, But if it be true that the Hindus, more than 3,000 years before the Christ, 3,000 years before the Christ means 3,000 plus. 2100 that is 5100 years back according to Bailey's calculations has attained a high degree of astronomical and geometrical learning. How many centuries earlier must be commencement of their culture have been since the human mind advances only step by step in the path of sciences. This record is telling that their records 5100 years back telling that superiority in the astro astronomical and geometrical calculations if this is the record of 5100 years back remember that learning that wisdom has accumulated from long before that means that this civilization is from long before that. It is a recording of 5100 years back. That means the knowledge is from before. Yes, another scholar from Wallace stage. Yes. However, ancient a book may be in which a system of trigonometry occurs. We may be assumed, assured, we may be assured it was not written in infancy of the science. 
trigonometry what is our trigonometry of our in our in our old age if trigonometry is documented in that way that science was developed not that in that time it must be from before if trigonometry in bharat in india is of that level that science was developed long, from long before that geometry must have been known in india long before the writings of the surya siddhanto which is supposed by the europeans to have been written before 2000 bc surya siddhanto as per this european scholar is 4000 years back if that is so that wisdom which over in the surya siddhanto must be older than that am i clear i will not bother you yes professor macdonald says in modern days european surgery has borrowed the operations of rhinoplasty rhinoplasty on the formation of artificial nodes from india where englishmen became acquainted with the art in the last century and that i am quoting astronomy was practiced in india as early as 2780 bc i am quoting from Weber's Indian literature. Now, I am coming to the end. I will stop it now. I will quote only two persons: Karl Marx and Macaulay. Macaulay designed the British education system for this India, for the colonial purpose. What was his purpose? what was its purpose i am quoting his speech in british parliament lord macaulay speech in british parliament in february 2 1835 i am quoting i have traveled across the length and breadth of india i have not seen one person who is beggar with a thief such wealth i have seen in this country such moral values people of such caliber that i do not think we would ever conquer this country unless we break unless we break the backbone of that nation which is her spiritual and cultural heritage again i am repeating i do not think we would ever conquer this country unless we break the backbone of this nation which is her spiritual and cultural heritage and therefore i propose that propose that <coughs> propose that we replace her old <coughs> ancient education system our culture for if the indians think that all that is foreign and english is good and greater than their own they will lose their self esteem their native self culture and they will become what we want them a truly dominated nation this is the purpose a macaulay design of british education system to dis destroy our ancient systems to in to infuse into us the idea that british system british science british literature english is superior and to make us forget our past and to introduce inject in us a inferiority complex to inject in us that whatever whatever your past is bad we are superior we have come here to teach you to educate you our sciences our literature our grammar is superior 
that's his idea and they have been successful and this very same technique is being followed by all the seculars all the sects of the communists marxists in india all the congress group and remember i have told you in india the congress was created by hume the british and subsequently though some nationalists tried to occupy that platform they could not Madan Mohan Malabhu could not. <coughs> Bal Gonga Tilak Tilak, Rajput Rai, Bipin Chandrapal, Desh Bondhu, Shubhas Chandra, Nam Kuk. Because British was the mightiest power at that time in in Bharat, in India. They always supported their agents to take control, to keep control on Congress. And think of Muslim League that was created in Dhaka in 1906 by. British and Nawab of Dhaka and communists. Those CPI was formed in Tuscan with the blessings of the Comintern in nineteen zero nineteen twenty one, but subsequently it was purchased by the British through British Communist Party, and the whole Communist Party became the agent of the British Empire. And all the Sikumaku Kambus, whoever they are in this country, are the are the generations born from these parties. They have no they are they are they have no declared policy of their own. They have no national policy. They are all they are the agents of the foreign masters. They are the agents of the enemies of our nation. They are following that old technique. They will never accept our Eastern heritage. They will never recognize that. They will always tell, "We are nowhere. We are not civilized. Europe came here, civilized us. All the sciences came from there. We are nowhere." They will never accept it because the moment they will accept it, their existence will be in crisis. Because they know in the world there are fifty Muslim countries. Many of them very rich, and 150 Christian countries. Many of them very rich, and all these parties, all these families, all these individuals who owe these parties under the umbrella I N D I A, all these secular, communist, and the Congress groups, they are paid by these rich countries. Rich countries, they are their agents. they are pursuing the same old policy to keep us subjugated to to continue us in our inferiority complex and last i am quoting karl marx karl marx is a person who is a god to the communists all sects of the indi communists i am quoting karl marx now i will stop here now Karl Marx, after all, man, he was a man of whatever. He was a man of learning. I am quoting that Karl Marx. England has broken the whole framework of Indian society. That means India had a frame, had a framework of society before the British came. England has broken down the whole framework of Indian society. without any symptoms of reconstructions yet appearing this loss of old world with no gain of a new one imparts a particular kind of melancholy to the present misery of hindu and separate hinduism ruled by britain from all its ancient traditions and from the whole of its past history karl marx is confessing that india had a system that had been destroyed by british but no good parallel system has been created that's why hindus in bharat are in melancholy 
and they have been derooted from their past, the glorious past and glorious traditions. This is Karl Marx. I am quoting Karl Marx articles on India, page 6 to 12, by People's Publishing House, Limited, Bombay, 1951. These communists and the Marxists they follow Karl Marx as their god. And I am sure they will not accept this statement of Karl Marx. Because this statement of Karl Marx is against the interest who want to keep India under subjugation. Intellectually, morally, scientifically, militarily, physically, economically. These Sikumaku Kongus are the agents of those foreign masters who are the enemies of this Bharat who want to keep this Bharat in subjugation continuously, <coughs> morally, physically, economically, militarily, intellectually. They are the enemies of Bharat. Be aware of them. Any question? Let me stop here. 52 minutes. Let me stop here. One day I will I'll, I'll, I'll talk on what is intellectuality, what is spirituality, what does it really mean. I was not uh, mentally ready to uh, with, with you today, because I was thinking that you are in the festive mood, but some of the headlines of the, the media houses of the Sikumaku Kongus uh, praising Hamas. They have not used a single word about that uh, rocket launching onto the <coughs> civilian areas of Israel. Few lakhs of rockets in few minutes, killing instantly 200 Jews, small children, ladies, all civilians. And they have not used a single word. They are the basically terrorists. All these Sikumaku Kongus are terrorists. terrorists. They are the supporters. They have never used a single one on how Hindus, Christians, Buddhists have been tortured in East Pakistan, West Pakistan, even in Kashmir by the Muslim fundamentalists. They have not used a single one. They are silent. They are the basically, they are the supporters of the these terrorists, anti-human terrorists, this, these forces who causes genocide, they, have, they, they talk of human values, this is their human value, they are the notorious persons, notorious persons. Let me stop here. Any Obhijit Namash Babu, Shukanta Babu, Namash Dhan, Kampana, Good Morning, Atmosh Goshwanda. Let me stop here. No question. Okay. Thank you.